Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. This is a no-nonsense guide for how you can get a free ray gun, not just once, but an infinite number of times because it's craftable once you do this in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. And not only that, okay, we're not going to stop there. We're also going to do the exact same thing with the Wonder Waff. So there are multiple Wonder Weapons that we're going to be able to craft an infinite number of times here. And the method also works for things like free Pack-a-Punch levels and free weapon rarity upgrades because it's all linked in with the schematics system in the game and we're going to be using that in order to get all of this cool stuff that we want here. So let's begin with the Wunderwaffe and then we'll talk about the slightly different method that we use for the Raygun. So the easiest way to make this work for the Wunderwaffe is to gradually progress your way through the game's missions and you want to go all the way through to Act 3, Tier 4 and get on to the Holdout mission. Then when you've got that mission selected, spawn into your match and look for this icon on your minimap. It's a little satellite and they're not everywhere these, like they're not as common as some of the other objectives like ether extractors and those sorts of things. So have a good look around and you should be able to find it eventually and then head over there and activate it. To do so, hold square on this kind of glowing thing in the center of this space and that will create a corrupted space around you that will be attacked by a load of zombies. You simply need to defend yourself within that corrupted space, getting as many kills as you can. And once you've completed the contract successfully, if you haven't yet got 50 kills in that corrupted space during the objective, then you can just go and find another Outlast contract, start it up again, and keep getting kills in that new space until you hit 50. Once you do hit 50, finish the objective, and then go over to the rewards rift. Inside, you're going to see that there are Wunderwaffe DG2 plans. You don't want it to just be an acquisition. You want it to be the plans for the weapon. And it will say, perform a successful exfil to craft this for future deployments. So your job now is to just exfil successfully with the plans. Once you've done that, it will mean that if you look in your game's menus, you can craft the Wunderwaffe over and over again. It goes on a cooldown each time you do it. So you do have to wait a little bit, but it's not crazy long and you don't have to use it the next game after you craft it. So you could do what I've done and just start stacking up Wunderwaffers ready to use on a rainy day and have like five in a row in your games if you wanted to. And the exact same system applies to plans and schematics for other things too, such as, like I said at the beginning of the video, your ammo mods, your free pack-a-punch levels, your free weapon rarity upgrades, and crucially, the ray gun. But you get those other things from slightly different methods compared to what I showed you with the Wunderwaffe and crucially, you do not need any story progress in order to get this free Wunderwaffe. It's available to anyone at any time, as long as you can extract with the plans. So let's dive into exactly how the best strategy works for getting those plans, and then I'll show you a little bit of gameplay of me using it as well. Our goal in the match where you're going for the Raygun plans is to get as powerful as possible as fast as possible. So I recommend spawning in ideally with ether crystals that are going to upgrade your weapon's pack-a-punch level, just because they're going to be handy for the strat that we're going to be implementing. So I'd suggest you spawn in and straight away you do two to three contracts in the tier one area without using your pack-a-punch crystal. Okay, save that for later. Trust me, it's going to be more important to use it elsewhere. But just do two to three really quick contracts to get yourself 5,000 points. Each contract gives you about 2,000 points and you'll also get a couple of points from killing the zombies. And that's why we're doing three contracts here. As soon as that's done, find yourself a good, fairly nimble vehicle. And my preference for this is to do the ATV driving mission and then keep the ATV afterwards and use it for what we're about to do because that vehicle is pretty strong and it's also fairly nimble and it gives you good cover when you've got stuff that's running at you and trying to attack you. So with that vehicle, you are going to drive into the heart of the tier three zone. And I know that might sound like a suicide mission, but trust me, we're doing this very tactically. Now, before you go into the actual zone itself, I want you to do a quick scout of the map for all of the wall weapon locations that are available in that area. And ideally, find the ones that are on the outskirts of tier three, so you don't have to go right into the very middle of it, but just get an idea of exactly where all of them are in your game. You're then going to drive to the nearest one to you, and you're going to stay in the car while you're driving to it. You don't want to hop out as soon as you get there, because you need to check that the weapon that you're finding is gold. If it's gold and it's on the wall, you're going to hop out and you're going to buy the weapon with your 5,000 points. But if it's purple, you're going to drive to a different wall weapon 
weapon spawn and buy that wall weapon instead. We're doing this because it's a really good deal. It's very economical to only spend 5,000 points, but to get something at gold rarity. And you can then use your Pack-a-Punch crystal on that weapon in order to boost its Pack-a-Punch level and make it even more beefy. Now, as soon as you fought it, get back in the vehicle straight away and get the hell out of tier three because you're going to want to earn a little bit more money now before you proceed with these steps. Do a couple more contracts so that you have enough money to pack a punch. And I'd say the out of the three people in your team, I would recommend you have at least one person with tier three pack a punch while you're doing this. But it's okay if some members of your team are only on pack tier two. It's just going to be a lot more chaotic and a lot more difficult to survive. But if you're an expert and you feel like that's okay, then sure, go with tier two. But otherwise, I'd recommend trying if you can to get to tier three. Now, the caveat for all of this is that obviously, if you already had a crystal to get your weapon to pack tier three at the very start of your game, and you already had one of the gold wrenches that gets your weapon rarity to legendary instantly as well, then you can skip all of the steps that I've just mentioned because your gun is already super powerful and you're already ready to go. I'm just trying to give you the fastest method to get caught up to that point if you're not already there yet. Now, once you're powerful and once your teammates are powerful, the last recommendation I have is for you to look out through your gameplay for circuit boards that you can use to activate sentry guns and also look out for buy stations where you can buy yourself your own movable sentry gun because both of these shred stuff no matter where you are in the map and it's going to be useful for what we're about to do which is completing missions in the tier 3 exclusion zone. Now you'll only have a couple of different missions available to choose from in your game so you may need to just do what's available to you but I have some recommendations for the different mission types to make your lives easier. Personally my favorite to do is is the bounty mission. Reason being, it's just fun to shoot a lot of stuff and not have to worry about any other objective other than surviving and taking down your opposition. And I think it's also a decently quick one as well, especially if you take my advice from before and you use a sentry gun and you use one of your circuit boards in a sentry turret so that that starts shooting your target for you. So as you can see here, this abomination got absolutely destroyed by me using my sentry turret, like to an insane level. And the sentry gun, as you can see here, is also pretty powerful as well. And it just adds to your firepower. It's like an extra person in your team. Now, if you don't want to do the bounties, you can try spores contracts like I'm doing in this clip here, for example, or you could try the weapons cache. And the weapons cache is another really good one. And it's the same actually with the outlast contracts. They both benefit a lot from activating the sentry in that main public square area because it has open line of sight on so many zombies in the area. And as long as you stay on the sort of scaffolding bit up top, as you can see, I'm doing here, your life's going to be super easy. Any abominations that are in the area, just like if they were bounty contracts, are going to get beamed by the sentry and you're going to be having a really good time. So you need to run through these objectives and each time, just like we did with the Wunderwaffe, go to the rewards rift at the end and check it to see if you got the ray gun schematic plans. And when you grab them, you're going to want to expel straight away. And also for the record, all your teammates will also be able to claim it from the reward rift. And it's not like a one for three people thing. You all get your own individual set of the plans and you'll have the ray gun unlocked in the menus to craft whenever you want. Now it's great having a ray gun in the game, but if you want to have the ray gun in real life, I've got some new limited edition merch on my website right now, which may be of interest to you if you like this sort of thing. So click through now while we've still got stock. The link's in the description, and I'll hopefully see you in another Zombies video very soon.